Allah chose them for you. Muslim or not Muslim. Practicing or not practicing. Good or bad. Allah chose them for you. They are a test and they are a blessing. Two ways. Because if they are good and kind, mashallah, it is very important to have a circle around you of people who care for you in a way that is unlimited. What that means is, something happens to you, immediately there must be a circle of people around you. Mostly Allah creates this within family members. Mostly. There are some exceptions and I'll perhaps get to that. But mostly when you have a circle of people around you who care for you, how are you? Is everything okay? I'm coming, I'm, I'll be there just now. Or I, we're together in this, I'm going to help you, I'm going to do this and do that. That's a big blessing. But in order to have that circle around you, you need to be very tolerant and you need to be very forgiving and you need to be broad minded in a certain way because Allah did not create those people with your mind and your emotions. Even your father who and your mother, those who are your parents and gave birth to you, they don't think the same and they don't have the same emotions. And they're not replicas of you. They probably would be similar in some ways, but very different in many other things. So in order to enjoy family, you need to be forgiving. You need to be accommodating. You need to be tolerant. And you need to sacrifice a little bit. If you're not prepared to sacrifice, how do you expect to enjoy the favors of a family unit? And when we say sacrifice, it's within a limit. Now, I was saying there are some exceptions. What are the exceptions? You have some people who are outright crazy. I had an email I received today. I read it and it's not the only one that has come on that subject where they say, my father's abandoned us. He went off and he left and he doesn't want to know us. And now that I've grown older, I tried to go out to meet him and he's just kicked us away. He doesn't want to know who we are and he has nothing to do and it's bothering me and affecting me. What should I say to that child? I wish I had a moment to speak to the father of that child. It's your responsibility, your duty, no matter what, to reach out to your children, no matter what, and to speak to them, to communicate to them, to empower them. Children tend to grow up very quickly. And in those tender years, while they are growing up, they need words of love from their parents. They need words of reassurance. They need words of goodness and kindness. They need support. They need positivity. They need someone to talk to them and guide them. Moments ago, I was speaking to the teens and tweens. And what we did say is, don't feel bad when someone tells you because someone needs to tell you. Another message that I received was when one of them said, I want to marry very far from our family because I want to marry into a community or into a culture that no one tells me anything and I don't want to be told a thing and I wouldn't like to anyone to interfere in my life in any way. And I said, my child, you need to be told things. Don't ever as a believer think that you should lead a life where no one's allowed to tell you anything because then you'd lose your way. You would lose your way. Your parents are there to tell you. Your mother is there to nag at you. It's normal. It's natural. They want goodness. They want you to grow up in a beautiful way. They're going to tell you, don't do this and don't do that. And don't dress this way and don't dress that way. I remember a woman who, some years ago, who said, you know, when I was growing up and as I got married and so on, I used to dress quite provocatively. She's telling you herself. And she says, I didn't like to be told. But still I was a little bit afraid of my parents. So when my parents were around, I used to try, you know, to perhaps dress a little bit more modestly and so on. But now that I have my own child doing things that are way beyond what my imagination would have allowed me to do when I was growing up, I really can't tolerate this. I'm thinking to myself, look how the world is changing. Look how it's changing. You don't want to be told it's fine. A day will come when you'll have children and you'll want to tell them, but they won't want to tell, they won't want you to tell them. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to be doing things that you consider totally absurd. I'll give you one quick example. Okay. A lot of you might recall your grandparents. We're not going beyond grandparents. A lot of you might recall your grandparents. 
Can you imagine your grandmother in a tights and a top walking down the street? Can you imagine? But can you imagine your daughter do that? Yeah, yeah, you can. Maybe a little kid. I'm not talking of adults, okay? But look how the world has changed. What we consider normal today was considered totally taboo by people of the past. And what is considered taboo today will be considered normal by the people of tomorrow. So what I'm trying to say is don't feel bad when someone just tells you, look, I think you shouldn't do this. That's your mother. That's your father. They have a right to let you know. That's your spouse. I mean, your husband has to tell you and your wife has to tell you as a, if, you know, if you're a husband, either way, listen, don't do this. It's not good. I don't like it. For example, who are you? I'm your mother. I'm your father. Well, I don't want to be told. Well, let me give you a story. Then you can tell them this story. Today, you don't want to be told. Tomorrow, what's going to happen? Are you prepared for your children to tell you the same thing? The answer is no. If you think about what's gone on, subhanallah.